our lesson today, uh, the student will be able to write ratios and to compare real world situations. The vocabulary today, first, what do we mean by a ratio? A ratio is a comparison of two numbers by division. There are three ways to write ratios. We can write ratios using the colon, uh, six to two. I can write it using the word two, six to two. Or I can write it as a fraction, six to two. But all three ways of writing ratios are read six to two. The second vocabulary term are equivalent ratios. Equivalent ratios are two ratios that name the same number. You can find equivalent ratios by multiplying or dividing each term of a ratio by the same non-zero number. All right, let's get down here to uh, some examples. Let me go here. Click, click, and here. Okay, let's get down to a couple of examples. All right, it asks us to use the recipe above to write the ratio in three ways, and we're talking about the following recipe. The recipe calls for four cups of cereal and two cups of pretzels. So if I want to write the ratio of pretzels to cereal, right, for problem A, pretzels, there are two cups. Cereal, there are four cups. So I would start by writing the ratio two to four. I could write that two to four, or I can write it as two to four. That's the three different ways we could write the ratio. For us, in sixth grade, we are going to write our ratios, for the most part, as fractions. All right? The second ratio we're asked, write, we are asked to write for part B asks us to write the ratio of pretzels to party mix. Well, there are two cups of pretzels. If I have four cups of cereal, and two cups of pretzels, that is a total of six cups of party mix. So I would write the ratio of two to six. Two to six, I can write it this way, or I can write it this way. So that's the three different ways that we can write ratios. All right, next example. When we're writing equivalent ratios, I can write the ratio an infinite amount of equivalent ratios using multiplication or using division. So let's take a look at four to six. That's our first ratio that we're given. I can use division to write an equivalent ratio as long as I divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same non-zero number, according to our definition for equivalent ratios from our first slide. Well, if I take the numerator and divide it by two, four divided by two is two, I take the denominator, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2 thirds is an equivalent ratio to 4 6. They are of equal value, hence the equal sign. Okay? Or I can use multiplication to write my equivalent ratio. All right? So I'm going to start with the same uh, 4 to 6 ratio. But now I'm going to use multiplication to write an equivalent ratio. Well, what, do I, what would I multiply by? Well, I can multiply by any non-zero number as long as I'm using the same number for both the numerator and the denominator to make an equal fraction. Well, let's try 2 over 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 6 times 2 is 12. 8 twelfths is the same as 4 6. 8 twelfths is the same as 2 thirds. All of these values are equal. I'd also like for my students to understand and see here that when we divide by 2 over 2, we're dividing by 1, right? Because 2 over 2 is the same as 1. And if I divide anything by 1, right, I get an equivalent value because anything divided by 1 is itself. Same with multiplication. Notice that when I multiply by 2 over 2, I'm multiplying by 1 because another name for 2 over 2 is 1. 4, 6 times 1 is itself. Well, 8 twelfths is the same as 4 sixths. Now, 
when I'm making equivalent fractions using multiplication, I can multiply by any non-zero number. So I could take my 4, 6, and I can multiply by 3 over 3, right? Or I can multiply by 4 over 4, or 5 over 5, or 6 over 6, as long as that non-zero number is the same for both the numerator and the denominator. 4 times 3 is 12, 6 times 3 is 18. So now we have four equivalent fractions, 2 thirds is the same as 4 6. 4 6 is the same as 8 twelfths. 8 twelfths is the same as 12 18 So when we write equivalent fractions, it's very easy. We can use division to make equivalent fractions, although you can't make as many equal fractions or equivalent fractions or equivalent ratios using division because you have to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same non-zero number. And not every, you know, not many pairs of numbers have many, you know, non-zero factors. But with multiplication, I can make an infinite number of equivalent values. I want to make sure that we understand that. Okay, let's try some more examples. I'm going to write two different ratios equivalent to each one. I'm going to use division, and I'm going to use multiplication. If I'm starting with example A, 10 35ths, I'm going to start with division. Well, what can I divide both 10 and 35 by? Well, I see they end in 0 and 5, so I know that I can divide by 5 over 5, which is another way of writing 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2, 35 divided by 5 is 7. We're saying that 2 sevenths is the same as 10 35ths. They are equivalent values, right? They're the same. That same problem, right? 10 35ths, let's write an equivalent value using multiplication. Well, let's multiply by 10 over 10, right? I can use any non-zero number to make an equivalent value, an equivalent ratio, as long as I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the same value. Well, why did I choose 10 over 10? Well, because it's easy to multiply a number by 10. So 10 times 10 is 100. 35 times 10 is 350. 100 over 350 is the same as 2 sevenths. They're equivalent values. How do I know? Well, because I multiply 10 35ths by 1, right? 10 over 10 is 1. So each of those uh, values that are boxed are equivalent. All right, let's take a look at example B. Example B, I'm going to start with 12 to 3. And I want to write an equivalent ratio for 12 to 3. First, I'm going to start with division. Well, what can I divide both 12 and 3 by? Well, I could divide by 3 over 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 4 to 1 is the same as 12 to 3. They are equal. I took 12 over 3 and divided by 1 but that one was in the form of three over three. Or I could take 12 thirds and I can multiply by uh, one as long as the numerator and the denominator are the same non-zero number. Well, let's see, let's try five over five. All right, where did I get five over five from? I just chose it because I can use any non-zero number as long as it's the same for the, both the numerator and the denominator to make an equivalent value. 12 times 5 is 60, 3 times 5 is 15. 60 over 15 is the same as 4 over 1. 4 over 1 is the same as 12 thirds. All right, let's try example C. I have 8 to 22. First, let's try division. What can I divide both 8 and 22 by? 2 over 2, correct. 8 divided by 2 is 4, 22 divided by 2 is 11. 4 elevenths is the same as 8 20 seconds. Let's take that same value, 8 20 seconds, and multiply by. Well, let's just multiply by 2 over 2. All right, keep the number small because it's pretty easy to multiply by 2. 8 times 2 is 16. 22 times 2 is 44. All right, 16 44 is the same as 4 elevenths. 4 elevenths is the same as 8 20 seconds. So just to understand, we can make equivalent values, equivalent ratios, using division, 
or multiplication. Okay, next page. We also want to be able to write ratios in simplest form, just like fractions. We want to be able to write them in simplest form. Write the ratio of bats to balls in simplest form. Well, how many bats are there? Well, there are, count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bats. How many balls are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So eight to twelve simplifies by dividing by what? Four over four. I didn't mean to put an equal sign. Let's uh, erase that. All right, I could divide by four over four. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. I made an equivalent value. How do I know that that fraction or ratio is written in simplest form? Because the greatest common factor of the numerator and the denominator is 1. That's how we know ratios or fractions in simplest form. Problem 3. You use 3 cups of popcorn kernels to make 24 quarts of popcorn. What is the ratio of amount to kernels to the amount of popcorn in simplest form? I start with the ratio of 3 to 24. I can simplify by dividing by 3 over 3, and we get 1 eighth. 1 to 8 would be the simplest form of 3 to 24. Okay, let's take a look at our next group of problems. Several students name their favorite flavor of gum. Mine's bubble mint. <laughs> Write the ratio that compares the number who chose fruit to the total number of students. Well, there were three students here that chose fruit. The total number of students is 9 plus 8 is 17, plus 3 is 20, plus 1 is 21. <coughs> That's our total. So, write the ratio of people that chose fruit to the total number. So, that ratio would be 3 to 21 in simplest form. We have divided by 3 over 3, and that would be 1 7. 1 to 7 in simplest form. All right. Let's take a look at problem 3. Monday's yogurt sales are recorded in the table. Write the ratio that compares the sales of strawberry yogurt to the total sales. Well, strawberry, there's an 8 there. How would I find the total? That would be 3 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8. Or, what's that going to be? 15, 21, 24 is the total. So the ratio of strawberry to total would be 8 to 24. I could divide each of those by 8. So 8 over 8 would simplify to 1 to 3 or 1 to 3. So 1 out of every 3 yogurt cups sold would be strawberry. Let's take a look at this next example. A pet store sold the animals listed in the table for a week. Write the ratio of cats to pets sold that week. Then explain its meaning. Well, cats to pets. Well, I need to know the total number for pets. Well, what's the total number? 10 plus 14 is 24. 24 plus 8 should be 32, right, would be the total number of animals. We're asked to write the ratio of cats to pets sold. Cats would be 8. Pets sold would be 32. If I simplify that ratio, I could divide by 8 over 8. And that's going to be 1 to 4 would be that ratio. If I continue, the circle graph shows the favorite ice cream toppings of several students. Use ratio language to compare the number of students who favor peanuts to the total number of students. Five students favor peanuts. What's the total number of students? Five plus one is six, plus four is 10, plus nine is 19. So five to 19 would be that ratio. Now, 
we're going to begin doing some problems using what are called tape diagrams. Tape diagrams are an incredibly useful tool to allow us to solve problems that involve ratios. We're going to keep the tape diagram problem simple today, but tomorrow we're going to step it up and really take a look at some tough real world situations that we could solve using the tape diagrams. But here are the basics. Katie wants to divide 30 flowers into two groups so that the ratio is 2 to 3. Use the bar diagram or tape diagram to show a ratio of 2 to 3. Well, there are a total of 2 plus 3, 5 parts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 equivalent parts. We call those parts units. So there's 5 units. We want to find the value of one of those units and that will allow us to answer the question. Well, how do I find the value of the unit? I have a total of 30. So these five units have to represent a total of 30. So if I take my 30 and divide by the five units, that means each of these units would have to have a value of 6 because 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 give us our total of 30. Once we know our unit, we're able to now answer the question. Uh, the ratio is 2 to 3. How many of each flower uh, uh, what they need? One group would have to have 12 flowers because 6 plus 6 is 12. The other group would have to have 18 flowers. So 12 to 18 would be uh, us taking 30 flowers and dividing it in a ratio of 2 to 3. All right. Let's continue with some tape diagram problems. A tape diagram is a diagram that looks like segments of tape. It shows the relationship between two quantities. All right, let's look at our next example. The ratio of your monthly allowance to your friend's monthly allowance is 5 to 3. The monthly allowances total $40. How much is each allowance? Well, I take my ratio of 5 to 3 and I draw my tapes, my pieces of tape. So one piece of tape is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units long. The other piece of tape is 1, 2, 3 units long. So I represent my ratio of 5 to 3 using the pieces of tape. The top piece of tape represents you. The bottom piece of tape represents your friend. But those 5 plus 3, those 8 units have to have a total of 40. So if I take my total of 40 and divide by my 8 equivalent parts, that means that my unit must be 5. Now if each of those units are 5, we can now answer the question. You made 5, 10, 15, 20, you had $25. Your friend made $15. But that ratio of 25 to 15 is the ratio of 5 to 3 that gives you a total of $40. So if we took our $40 and divided that $40 at a ratio of 5 to 3, we'd have 25 to 15. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. You separate 42 bulbs of garlic into two groups, one for planting, one for cooking. Uh, you have, you will plant three bulbs for every four bulbs that you, you, you cook with. So let's write that ratio. We have the plant and then we have cook. Plant three, right? One, two, make those pieces a little bigger so they're easier to write in all right so let's make those a little bigger all right so make them a little bigger one two three and then your cooking ones would be four one right two three four when you make your tape diagrams try to make the piece of tape equal length now we know that that has to total 42. So those seven parts have to total 42. Well, if I take 42 and divide it by those seven equivalent parts, it means that the unit must be 6. Once my unit is 6, I can answer the question. Right? It says uh, each bulb has about 8 cloves. How many cloves will you plant? Well, we're planting 6, 12, 18 bulbs, right? So 18 bulbs we plant. 18 
times 8, right, should be, what's that, 80 and 64, that's 144 cloves we'd wind up getting from the uh, 18 bulbs. Problem 3 here says, well, suppose if an example 2 is a ratio of 2 to 3. Well, where's example 2? Well, that's up here. So that's our $40, but it's a ratio of 2 to 3. So this was you, this was your friend, but instead of you having a ratio of, what was it? It was uh, 5 to 3, we're going to get a ratio of 2 to 3. So your friend actually makes more, right? Because you have two equivalent parts, your friend gets three equivalent parts. But those parts have to total, I think it was $40, I just want to double check, uh, yes, $40. So we take those $40, we have to divide it, divide it by the five equivalent parts. 40 divided by five means that your unit now is gonna be eight. So if the unit is eight, eight times two, you made $16, your friend made $24. All right, let's continue. All right, we started looking at tape diagrams here. Here's just another example of a tape diagram from a, a different you know, textbook publisher, but rather easy. For every, uh, the tape diagram shows the ratio of dogs to cats at an animal shelter. We have a ratio of four to three <coughs> based on the fact that my dog has, my tape for the dog is four units long. My tape for the cats is three units long. For every four dogs at the shelter, there are three cats. That's what that would represent. The tape diagram below shows the ratio of dollars earned to dollars saved. How could you describe the ratio? Well, you earn $3 to every dollar saved, or you could reverse that and say that you saved $1 for every $3 earned. All right. We're going to finish up with the idea of a double line graph. Right, and with the double line graph, you can just take a look at it. The double number line diagram is another way to represent ratios that shows how two quantities in different units are related. Cat works at a bookstore. Using the double line, describe the ratio of hours cat works to the money she earns. Well, the top line represents the hour of work, the bottom line represents the earnings per dollar. And notice in one hour, she makes $7. So two hours, she makes $14. Three hours, $21. Four hours, $28. Five hours, $35, and so on. So the ratio work to dollars earned is one to seven. For every hour cat works, she earns $7. The double number line, this double number line shows Emma's speed during a track event. Describe the ratio. Well, here we see that she runs 5 meters every 2 seconds, 10 meters every 4 seconds, 20 meters every 8 seconds, and so on. I always want to know, though, right, the unit. So, in 1 second, what would, how fast, or how many meters would she run? Well, what is 5 divided by 2? 5 divided by 2 is 2.5. So she runs 2.5 meters every second. All right? Well, that's the end of the lesson today. Hopefully you can excuse my voice because I'm not feeling great. But I hope that uh, the lesson I hope that the lesson was helpful for you. All right, good luck.